I beg to move that this House do now adjourn. The question is that this House do now adjourn. Mr. Steve McCabe. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Deputy Speaker, I'm grateful for the opportunity tonight to make a case to the Minister to consider the system for the manufacture and sale of number plates in this country. I'd like to declare my interest as the Secretary of the Associate Parliamentary Subject Group, the European Secure Vehicle Alliance, which has long campaigned to improve vehicle security. The UK, unlike many other countries, relies on a poorly conceived and poorly regulated manufacturing and distribution regime with approximately 40,000 outlets who on average supply only two or three pairs of number plates per week. This badly designed approach offers neither quality or inherent integrity while countries like Sweden have designed and developed a very secure system which relies on a single supplier appointed on a five-year basis in a competitive tender process which starts with the assumption that the number plate should be like a secure document which can assist law enforcement agencies as well as protecting the owner's vehicle. In Sweden, the plate manufacturer receives their instructions electronically from the Swedish equivalent of the DVLA. The system is simple and efficient and provides for security and is similar to that adopted by many European countries. It provides enhancements which benefit both motorists and state and works out cheaper for the motorists than is the case in the United Kingdom. This controlled supply approach operates in a large number of countries. In some countries, the security value attached to number plates is such that they are produced in the same institutions that print the banknotes. And it seems inconceivable that our government would allow a free-for-all in, say, for example, passport production. In 1994, the Home Office Vehicle Crime Reduction Team and the Association of Chief Police Officers produced a plan to reduce vehicle crime, which recommended adoption of the Swedish number plate regime. In November 2010, a further report from ACPO, from their Vehicle Crime Intelligence Service, recommended a system of secure vehicle registration marks be adopted through a limited number of approved suppliers. The British Number Plates Manufacturers Association, the Department of Transport and the DVLA showed little enthusiasm for the 94 plan or the 2010 report. Perhaps that's not too surprising, Mr Deputy Speaker, given that the DVLA is not generally associated with innovation and the BNME is heavily influenced by dominant manufacturers and suppliers, not least the multinational group 3M. These vested interests have little incentive to change the system. It suits them to have a relatively unsophisticated model for the supply and assembly of number plates. 3M gains enormously from the supply of the one high value product, the reflective sheet used in British number plates. One consequence of the ease with which plates can be obtained in this country is that it facilitates the theft and transfer of cars, what's often known in the trade as ringing or cloning, and is usually associated 
with organised crime. There's also a problem with the theft and counterfeiting of VRM plates. Despite considerable advances in automatic number plate recognition since the late 1990s, there has been no corresponding change in our number plate technology, yet we know the police think this needs to happen. Indeed, Hills, one of the leading UK number plate suppliers, has produced millions of plates that cannot be read by many of our ANPR cameras. It seems likely that other suppliers are producing similarly deficient plates. Far from building on the technological lead which developments in ANPR should give the United Kingdom, we seem to be concentrating on providing comparatively expensive number plates which are of little value in terms of security or assistance to law enforcement. The style and layout of our plates could be improved. I have here, Mr Deputy Speaker, a handy prop which I am willing to gift to the Minister at the end of the debate. It contains a hologram, a concealed Union Jack identifier, small but camera and computer readable ID marks and the VIN number of the vehicle. That is the kind of thing I have in mind. I don't know what's happened to the British Standards Institute review into number plates, which I understand was supposed to be published early in the new year. Perhaps the Minister can enlighten us, but it seems to me that this review has concentrated on the views of the industry. The BNMA and its members is hardly likely, therefore, to come up with any case for change. Indeed, the committee of the BSI, which considers number plates, is chaired by an executive of 3M. It is my contention that this cosy, almost collusive set of relationships is hindering our potential to develop a new generation of number plates, for which there is now a strong case to be made. We are exerting undue influence on the DVLA and the Department of Transport, and they are putting the profits of multinationals before the interests of our motorists and the needs of the police. I hope the Minister can commit to reviewing the existing situation. I hope I can persuade him to review our use of number plates in the context of security and related technology. I hope we can convince him that there are clear advantages in having more security features, and I hope he will re-examine the case for greater control of supply of number plates. I believe that a single source supply model warrants consideration, but I recognise others may judge it to be too great a step, and my interest is in advocating a model which provides for a markedly more secure and sustainable number plate regime. Such an approach need not cost the taxpayer money. It will more likely raise revenue through a better established market which can support the sale of cherished plates. And of course, any government seriously considering introducing cost-effective and sustainable road pricing will need an effective number plate regime that gives access to essential data. Finally, I contacted West Midlands Police to advise them of this debate. They said that change is definitely needed and long overdue. They support improved design and marks to aid automatic number plate recognition. A limited number of approved suppliers and metal VRM plates pop riveted to the vehicle to prevent theft 
and tampering. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, I'm grateful. And if I could first declare a, a, an unpaid interest as uh, Vice Chair of the European Secure Vehicle Alliance and Associate uh, Parliamentary Group. Uh, it's a pleasure to follow the Honourable Member for uh, Birmingham, uh, Selly Oak. Um, he had the use of a prop, which uh, I, I, wasn't, I hadn't myself seen in the chamber uh, before, Mr Deputy um, sp Speaker, but certainly it was a very, very interesting uh, prop. And my only objection to it was that the, uh, the, the Union Jack identifier was concealed. And in respect to this, this debate, you, you might have thought, Mr Deputy Speaker, that I might focus my remarks on the single most important issue within the uh, vehicle registration mark uh, regime, which is the fact that we have to have the European flag on all our license plates. Um, however, given the Prime Minister's speech last week and the uh, in fact, we can now look forward to an in-out referendum on our membership of the EU uh, by uh, 2017. I no longer feel, feel the need to concentrate my remarks on that area. So I will follow up some of the uh, points made by the Honourable Member for Birmingham, Sally Oak, and in particular the position of the uh, police on these matters. And I, I'm grateful to um, the Honourable Member for sharing with me some of the material the West Midlands Police have very helpfully provided in this area. Basically, I mean, the police have highlighted historical issues uh, with the existing uh, vehicle registration mark regime uh, for many years, and their recommendation has been for a system of secure anti-tamper, e.g. riveted to, to the body of the car uh, plates, which should be av uh, available through limited approved uh, suppliers. Um, the problem, though, is that the Department of Transport um, has responded to the police by rejecting their recommendations on the basis, supposedly, that they're, or at least according to West Midlands Police, that um, they're unable to prove that the increase in theft of uh, registration plates is linked to criminality. Uh, and I find that a sort of quite extraordinary position. I, I don't know whether the Minister may be able to give us any explanation as to that. But I'm concerned that the actual expl ex explanation is that those who benefit within the industry from the, previous, the, the current re regime have too strong an influence within the Department for Transport and the concerns of the police and indeed the uh, wider interests of the consumer uh, hold insufficient uh, s -s sway. It just doesn't strike me as a sensible way of organising a a, a regime to have, as I remember the friend uh, on the member for Birmingham Sally Oak said, um, someone from 3M, this major manufacturer that provides the, the high value element of the number plate, and I, I suspect a far higher value or at least cost element than it needs to be, because it is in the interests of that multinational that our market should be. Um, dispersed, broken up with a very large number of um, s s suppliers, it being a very sort of relatively small sum for, for each person involved in the industry, such that competitive pressures don't come to bear to reduce the price at which they can sell that reflective um, uh, piece of equipment, or that we don't see that market opened up to other competitors to the benefits of our consumers. Um, if, though, we can at least you know, look at the police position, if we're not worried about the, 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 con, the, cons, the consumer, as I believe we should be, I think the suggestion that the increase in theft of number plates isn't linked to criminality is, is really rather pr preposterous. Um, the West Midlands found that in 2007 to 8 that their monthly average of thefts was running at 250. By 2011, that increased to uh, 425. And that accounts itself for 20 or 30 percent of, of that thefts from, 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 from vehicles. Um, I, I really think it's for the Depart Department for Transport to prove its view that somehow this isn't associated with criminality. And the West Midlands Police give a, a whole list of examples of the way this is associated with criminality. To legitima legitimise the use of a stolen vehicle, disguising a vehicle's identity to use in crime, false reporting after a, a speed camera activation, uh, road traffic collisions or other offences where people walk away without reporting them to escape congestion charging and insurance premiums. Potentially something that could cut, come out. I'm not sure I would approve of the, the road pricing uh, position taken by um, the member opposite, but uh, charging in that way is going to, I understand, be used on the Dartford, on the Dartford Bridge. 
Um, but one of the very, very clear ways in which these num number plates that are stolen are used is for theft of fuel offences. And since the Department of Transport supposedly wants evidence on this, I'm delighted that the West Midlands Police in February 2011 actually commissioned a case study uh, across the whole of Birmingham. 100, 153 thefts of uh, number plates were reported, of which 43, i.e. 30% of these, were subsequently used in theft of fuel offences. I think that's very, very clear evidence that the increase in theft is associated with criminality. So from the police perspective, I think the, the, the argument for change is, is, is long overdue, and it, it, in particular, some security arguments for, 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 for limited um, suppliers, I could certainly see that being quite a lot cheaper as well, but in particular, the riveting of plates to vehicles to make it much more difficult to steal those plates and then use the stolen plates to support a, a whole other range of criminality. And before I conclude, can I just raise a wider issue with the Minister? Beyond vehicle registration plates, surely the, the system where we have this British Standards Institute and various committees are chaired by various individuals who have very, very clear vested interests, which are very, very different from that of the consumer or wider community. Is this a, a really a, a sensible way to run things? Shouldn't this be opened up where possible to competition and where not, at least to a degree of scrutiny from ministers? Minister. Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, I'd like to congratulate the Honourable Member for Silly Oak on securing the debate on the UK registration mark regime, uh, and I um, look forward to responding to it in a moment. I also welcome my Honourable Friend to his place and the remarks he's made, and I'll comment on those in a moment as well. I'm certainly aware that the Honourable Member for Silly Oak is Vice President of the European Secure Vehicle Alliance, an organisation which has dedicated itself to reducing vehicle-related crime, fraud and disorder. And so I'm pleased to respond on behalf of the government to this matter, which is clearly an issue to his constituents, to the wider UK public and, of course, to the government itself. Uh, so I, I do feel that we're trying to respond on uh, behalf of all motorists. Um, and I listen very carefully uh, to the Honourable Member and his particular espousal of the Swedish system. Uh, and, I, and I hear and I recognise you know, the merits that he put forward of that system. But I can't share his view that the UK system is poorly conceived or poorly regulated. Um, and I can't share the view that we allow a free-for-all, and perhaps he'd just let me put on the record why I think that. The Register of Number Plate Suppliers Scheme was established in 2003 to regulate the supply of number plates in the UK. That has helped to reduce the opportunity for criminals to obtain plates, disguising the identity of uh, stolen vehicles, or, or for any use in criminal activity. As he rightly says, there are almost 40,000 suppliers on the, uh, the register. There are 38,894, to be absolutely precise. Uh, and whilst I acknowledge, as the Honourable Gentleman put forward, that other countries operate a different regime in terms of supply and format, and that does include the single supplier system, the regime of the register of number plate suppliers does represent a system of regulation. I certainly accept prior to that it was possible to buy number plates in the UK for any vehicle from any supplier without valid checks or controls. And that's why it was essential that this system was put in place. That scheme makes it more difficult for criminals and penalty evaders to abuse the number plate process as it requires them to prove entitlement to the plate and to provide personal identification. So it really has closed off the opportunity for all for criminals to obtain number plates through legal channels and does have, um, contrary to some of the uh, suggest or contrary to some of the uh, view you might have got, it does have the support of the police. All number plate suppliers now have to register by law. They pay a one-off fee to join the scheme. The scheme is, has an object to ensure that number plate suppliers, number plates are only sold to a purchaser who can provide that entitlement and can provide verification of personal details. This is achieved by producing the necessary documents, such as vehicle registration certificate and photo car driving license, as a indication of identity. Number plate suppliers are then required to record sales and to make them available for inspection by the police 
or indeed by local authorities. That's an important source of information for investigation of vehicle uh, theft and indeed other crime related to motor vehicles. It is an offence to create and supply number plates that don't comply with the relevant regulations and the British standard. And in order to comply with the British standard, each plate must be permanently and legibly marked with the British standard number, the name, the trademark, or indeed another means of identifying the number plate manufacturer or the component supplier and the name, of the, and, the name and address of the supplying outlet. The DVLA enforcement officers, again, slightly, uh, give a slightly different impression, I think, to the one the Honourable said. The DVLA enforcement officers, in conjunction with trading standards and the police, carry out a number of intelligence-led targeted enforcements against both registered and re unregistered number plate suppliers, such as market traders. And I think that really does argue, rather argue slightly against it. And I think, he, I think that at the outset it would have, been, I think would have been helpful if he had, whilst I think the Honourable Gentleman made a number of valid points, I think that the, the, the registration scheme and the action the DVLA takes is, uh, is important uh, to maintain the integrity of the British uh, number plate system. So. To the Minister, uh, and actually I do recognise there has been a modest attempt at regulation. I think I'm trying to persuade him to go further. But I wonder if you can give me any figures on how many successful prosecutions have resulted from the activities of the DVLA enforcement officers in the last few years. Uh, well, what I would seek to do is try and uh, answer that question later in my speech. If not, I shall, of course, write to the Honourable Gentleman, providing him with that uh, piece of information. He was right to highlight the concern a few years ago when a single manufacturer, Hills, developed a system of printing which had unforeseen, circumstance, un unforeseen side effects of making the number plate text unreadable to the automatic number plate recognition. And he's absolutely right to raise the concerns that that has, uh, still has, because uh, it is undoubtedly true that although the process has been stopped, and although that Hills were the only uh, manufacturer using this system, there are still an unknown number of so-called transparent plates in circulation. I think, I hope you'll accept that the estimation that the DFT has done, the absolute worst case scenario could be 5% of all cars being unreadable. The reality, I think, is that, uh, and we've got you know, reasonable evidence for, for suggesting this, the reality is the actual numbers are somewhat smaller than that. Nonetheless, it, it was undoubtedly uh, a development that needed to be stopped immediately, it was, and has been. Most of the transparent plates were actually fitted to fleet vehicles, which are sold into individual ownership, uh, and the plates, therefore, are routinely swapped out for uh, regular opaque, opaque plates which is one of the reasons why I think the number is less. But nonetheless, um, there, there were no concrete rules to stop uh, that process at the time, uh, and that has now been, uh, that has now been remedied. Uh, I will. The, the manufacturing and fashion of Hills um, it, what was owned by 3M. Is the minister not concerned at least of a potential conflict of interest that that company, which is so well served by the existing registration market, um, an has an executive chairing, the relative British standard, which leads to the continuation of that market? Well, my Honourable Fed leads very neatly into my next section of my speech, where I am going to address the issue of the British Institute, uh, the British Standard Institute review. Um, my, my predecessor, committed to looking at that, and the Honourable Gentleman asked for an update, and I'm pleased to say this evening, clearly it is an area that we are looking at. We're looking to change the standard BSAU 145 brackets D, uh, and that looks at the reflective quality of number plates. Certainly recent, advantages, uh, recent advances to the uh, automatic number plate recognition technology means that cam cameras are finding it more difficult to read older number plates, and uh, as, uh, as increasingly as he is aware, not least through the bill that came through this House on Tuesday, um, AMPR is increasingly used for many aspects of not only managing the road network, but ensuring enforcement with regimes such as congestion charge and the HGV levy. Um, 
uh, as well as the detection of and prevention of crime. Therefore, a committee was set up to improve standards. Uh, it was given an 18-month programme of review, supported both by my department and the Home Office. It has used, and I think is right to use, wider industry expertise. I hear clearly the point being made by the Honourable Member and by my Honourable Friend, although dare I challenge them to say that had we not used wider industry expertise, one of, one of their colleagues might have been challenging me to ask why we'd kept this review to civil servants. I think once the committee has made its recommendations, and I wish to tell you, I wish to inform the House that those recommendations will be published and consulted on in late spring this year, I really do hope that both uh, the Honourable Member representing his body and my Honourable Friend will take that opportunity, and it will be a full, full opportunity to respond to the recommendations of the committee when they're published. The committee has done some rigorous work uh, and I, think it, I hope it will go some way to reassuring the Honourable Member when he sees the, recomm the recommendations. And I hope also that he and my Honourable Friend will take the opportunity and if they feel practices are not being corrected that they like to see corrected by this specific standard, they will take the opportunity to do so. Nonetheless, I think that this, the work that, uh, that has been undertaken and will be published will do, uh, go a long way to maintain confidence in the number plate regime tackling vehicle exercise duty evasion and improving safety. The Honourable Gentleman suggested that the introduction of a more, uh, more secure number plate uh, system would support the sale of cherished plates. Um, since 1989, to meet the widespread interest in attractive, personalised and cherished registration marks, the DVLA has been operating a sale of marks scheme. This is a special facility that allows motorists to acquire and retain the use of particular registration marks that's not been, that have not been previously introduced. The volume of registrations sold by the agency since the start of the scheme in 1989 is uh, 3.8 million, which in turn has generated over 1.8 billion in revenue. And the revenue raised so far this financial year currently stands at just over 49.5 million, with 166,000 registration marks being sold through the DVLA. It's clearly popular with the motoring public. It's recognised that there remains an issue where keepers of vehicles will attempt to flout the law by displaying registration marks in an incorrect format, using in illegal suppliers to create that number plate. But I, uh, I will. But, it, but it clearly the point is that if those marks are in the incorrect format, they will have been supplied by an, by an illegal supplier. And as I made my, in my earlier in my speech, I made the point that those are already would not be on the register and therefore those suppliers would be acting illegally already. That point. What, why does the Minister think the DVLA are allowed to auction plates that any normal rational person would realise are only being purchased because the person intends to have them tampered and altered illegally? They would have no value otherwise. Well, not all cherished plates um, not all cherished plates, and indeed the vast majority of cherished plates, would not fit into the category of the Honourable Gentleman said. Some of the, the cherished plates, Mr Deputy Speaker, might even have our initials. I can see you now already, any one being one of the great number plates of our time. The DVLA and the police take the matter of misrepresentation and misrepresentation of registration marks very seriously. The misrepresentation clearly makes vehicles more difficult to identify. It hampers police efforts. Uh, and it really, uh, as, but I, I make the point again that if you have a, if you have misrepresented your uh, number plate, you are create, you are already create, committing an illegal offence. It is, as I say, a criminal offence to alter, rearrange, or misrepresent the characters of a vehicle registration mark in any way that makes it difficult to distinguish the normal registration number. The fine, li the fines are liable. Offenders, sorry, uh, offenders are liable to a maximum fine of £1,000. And at this point, I just want to address the remarks of my honourable friend from Rochester and Strood. I, I have to confess um, surprise and bafflement at his remarks, because neither I nor my officials um, recognise the remarks he's attributing to us. I would obviously make the offer to him that if he cares to supply me as to where they came from and a source, I will certainly look into it. Um, uh, 
but, uh, but I have to say at this stage, um, whilst I'm prepared to accept that we may have, the department may have made those remarks, they're not marks we at this, that we recognise. My, my remarks are the position of the Department for Transport as characterised by the West Midlands Police. <clears throat> ah. Well, remarks being characterised by the West Midlands Police may not be in all sorts of uh, different, uh, in different ways. And I'm happy to discuss with him later some of the remarks. But let me be clear that over the last century, um, the number plate has employed a number of security features to decrease the amount of misrepresentation, cloning and fraud in which some drivers are engaged in. Uh, and this, and our department, the department, through my predecessor who instituted the BSI review, um, we have some challenging issues to face, but I am clear that the integrity of the number plate regime system is, is absolutely crucial to the integrity of road safety as well as road crime. In conclusion, I can't reassure the Honourable Gentleman that we will be moving to a system of single supplier, but we will Order. continue to work with the industry. Order. The House stands adjourned.